Hi everyone, it's Christine here. Welcome to the Scrap and Create YouTube channel. I am here with part four of my 9x9 Stamperia Alice mini album tutorial. This is the last video in this tutorial series and this should be a relatively quick video. I just wanted to show you how I did the pop-up elements that you see throughout the album if you watch the walkthrough of the album. Now, Obviously, if this is not something you're interested in doing, you can just utilize those flaps as if they were regular photo mat flaps or take the flaps off completely but um, and just not utilize them at all. But I did want to show you this technique just in case it's something you were interested in doing. The first thing that you want to do is that you want to take a piece of cardstock that matches you know, the cardstock you've been working with. It's the same color as your pages and everything, and you want to cut it eight inches by four inches and then score it on the eight inch side at four inches. That gives you a card that measures four by four once it's folded. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to figure out what type of closure you would like to use for your little card. And I apologize that some of this is already done. Um, I lost some of the footage, so I'm reshooting this now. So some of this is already done, but I think I can talk you through it. This is the easy part. So anyhow, um, to decorate the cards, you'll need some design paper. I ran out um, of design paper that was big enough for the full length or the full size of, this, of the cards. But uh, if you have design paper, you would cut three pieces at three and three quarters by three and three quarters for the cover, the inside, uh, and then the two inside flaps. The back you can leave absolutely plain. Before you adhere down the paper, you want to decide on what closure you want to use for your card because you'll want a way to keep this closed so it's not flipping and flapping all around as you're going through the book. I decided to use for mine ribbon closures. So what you want to do is you want to put score tape down on the front and on the back of your little card and then go ahead and adhere your ribbon. That's the first thing you want to do after you folded your card if you're going to use a ribbon closure. You could also use magnets if you like but I used a lot of magnets throughout my album and I wanted to save uh, some magnet usage and I thought the ribbon also added a pretty touch. So once you've got your closure figured out and uh, adhered down, you can go ahead and adhere your three pieces of design paper, or in my case, I just put solid coordinating colored cardstock along with just some strips of design paper to give it some fun and a little bit of added interest. The next thing that I chose to do is I liked uh, this the collection comes with one sheet that's all playing cards and you can cut them out. So on each of my pop-up elements, I have three cards that I cut out. Of course, I inked around all the edges. And, um, and then I just glued them just by putting a little bit of glue on the left sides of the three cards. That leaves the cards open on the right where I can put my, um, my front photo mat. This photo mat measures the white represents your photo. So the white would be just, you could pretend that's a picture, and it's three by three. And then I put the black frame around it, which is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Of course, you don't have to use the frame if you don't want to. You could just slide your photo itself down right behind these little playing cards. I just liked the black frame because it kind of made the photo pop up a little bit, but whatever you want to do is fine. So um, anyway, you want to go ahead and, and, you know, Put your little photo mat in if you want. Just make sure that you have your cards open on the right. I'm going to take this out now because we're going to work on the inside next. So on the inside, I've already added my little cardstock covers there to decorate the inside. So here's the part now that is actually the most important part. This is all easy peasy stuff. Now we need to make the little pop-up mechanism. So you want to cut a little strip of paper to half an inch by three and a quarter inches. The way that I got the half an inch width is by just looking at the shapes that I was going to be cutting out and determining how wide they were. As I mentioned in previous tutorials, um, you get 10 packs of paper in each uh, pack of the Stamperia Alice collection. Four of those, actually, if you include the playing cards, um, paper as well are cut aparts. So that's why, as I mentioned in my earlier tutorials, why I needed to use a lot of coordinating colored cardstock because while I love the cut aparts, the back of the cut aparts is not, um, 
you know, solid design paper. It actually is just a back to the to the beautiful cut aparts. These are great. I have one full sheet left that I can use for future projects. So what I did is I used one sheet of each of the cut aparts for the flips and flaps in my album. I used one sheet to cut out all the different little characters and use them in my pop-up elements. And now I have one sheet left over for future projects. So in looking at them, I just determined, you know, they're not very wide. So a half an inch would be wide enough. Now, if you're using a different paper collection where you have larger images, you may want to adjust the width of this little um, strip of paper that serves as your pop-up mechanism. But for this project, all of my pop-up cards have the same measurement when it comes to this uh, little mechanism, okay? So it's half an inch by three and a quarter inches. Then on the three and a quarter inch side, you want to score at three quarters of an inch, one and one quarter of an inch, two and a quarter, and two and five eighths, alrighty? Then you wanna go ahead and get some strong adhesive. I chose quarter inch score tape, and you wanna put score tape on the first and second um, spaces in between the score lines. So here, we scored at three quarters of an inch, so you wanna put tape on that first three quarter inch section. Here we scored uh, between three quarters and one and a quarter. So you want to put score tape on that section. And then finally you want to put score tape at the very far end on the right side as well. So you have three of your spaces with score tape. Okay, you want to go ahead and burnish that tape down with your bone folder. All right, and then what you want to do is just take the tape off the far left um, space first. So that's that that, that tape we put before our first score line. You wanna take that backing off first. Then turn your mechanism upside down, all right? And you are going to be placing, of course, fold on all your score lines. I should have mentioned that. So they're, you know, kinda, of, so the paper's kinda of used to being folded. So go ahead and just, you know, fold on all those score lines. Now, this tape backing that we just took off is actually gonna go on this top panel of the inside of your card you're going to line up the crease on this little strip of paper, the, the pop-up mechanism. You're gonna line up the crease here with the crease of your card. So go ahead and center it as best you can. You can you know, get your ruler out and get it nice and centered if you want to. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I am going to lift the card, the top of the card up just a bit so I can see the crease really well. So right now I'm not sticking anything down. I'm just getting it in place. Alrighty, so I'm getting it so where it's centered. I have it centered and I have this crease here lined up with the crease in the card. And then what I'm gonna do once I have it lined up where I want it is I'm going to stick where I've removed the adhesive, the tape, the, the score tape backing to that top part of this the card. So it is now, now we have this, this part right here adhered to this top section of the card. The rest, we still have the tape backing on, see? But the creases line up, and that's important. You want those creases, the crease of the card and the crease of this first section of this mechanism to line up. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense, and I'm explaining that well. The next thing you wanna do is go ahead and remove the score tape backing from the second piece, which is the one right next to the, the second uh, space, I should say, rather, which is the one right next to the one we just adhered. And then this is just going to adhere right down to this the bottom of the card base. So now it looks like this. So we have two of the three sections that we need adhered down adhered. Mine's a little crooked, so I'm just fixing mine a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now you want to, like I said, make sure you fold it on all your score lines. So now you have something that looks kind of weird, right? It looks like this. What you're going to be doing is once you fold on all those score lines, you have this little tiny space here. Can you see that? It's, it's very small in between these two score lines. This is between the two and a quarter and the two and five eighths where we scored there. That's going to be right at the top. It's not going to be adhered to anything. This part, which is from the two and which is where we scored, uh, I'm sorry, this is, this, this is the score line between one and a quarter, right, 
Okay, so this, yeah, I'm sorry, that's correct. So this is the final bit between the two and five eighths where we last scored and then the end of the strip of paper, which is the three and a quarter mark. Remember, we put our last piece of score tape on that last section. So that is actually going to be adhered to the back of the card, the same place that we adhered the first section. So what you just want to do is fold on those score lines, make sure you fold very nicely on those score lines, and then you want to pull the card front, the top of the card up, so that you get this perfectly, let me show you, I'm going to stand up and show you in the camera what you want to do before I actually do it uh, and take the tape backing off. You want this to the top here where we have this little this tiny little space in between our score lines. Do you see that tiny space? Maybe if I turn it that way, there's this tiny space here in between the score lines. You want that perfectly straight and against the back of your card base. So this is this panel here where we have our score tape is gonna go right against the back such that when you have it adhered properly and the card is, is, an, is, is perfectly straight up, so it's at a 90 degree angle, this is straight up against the back like that. Do you guys see that? That's what you want to have happen. Okay, so that's what you want it to look like when you have it adhered down. So I'm going to sit back down now and go ahead and do that step myself. So you just take this tape backing off now. This last section. Remember, we have this tiny little score line area. This is between the two and a quarter and two and five eighths. Okay, this, this little section is going to be right at the top. And you want it straight perpendicular to the back of the card base when the card base is at a 90 degree angle. All right, so once you have it where you want it, you can go ahead and stick it down and really, you know, stick it down really well so that that score tape really sticks. And then I like to close the, the lid of the card and give it some burnishing on the outside with my bone folder as well. So this is what it looks like when it's adhered. It's just basically a little rectangle, right? Um, it's just a little rectangle that closes flat and then you open it and boom, there it is. Okay, so it's just a little rectangle that we have created. I probably explained that and made it more, way more complicated than it is. So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the description, I mean in the comment section below of this video. By the way, I will also have all the measurements in the description box of this video below. There are, this size is the main size that I used for the album. So this size of pop-up mechanism will appear on pages two, four, six, and then the small one on the inside back cover. The other two, which is on page eight, and then the larger one on the inside back cover are slightly bigger, but the mechanism is the same. So I will have the measurements for the card and the design paper in the description box below, but just know that for every single pop-up, this mechanism here and the way that you put it together is exactly the same regardless of the size of the card. Okay, so the last step to create the pop-up is of course to adhere our little guy to our pop-up mechanism. So the way that I do that is I grab my art glitter glue. You could use score tape as well. It's really uh, up to you, your preference. And I'm just going to put glue on this long, oops, I need to, I had forgotten to put my pin in my glue, so let me just unclog it a little bit there. Okay, just along this long space. Don't put any glue up top here, okay? Don't put any glue on the top. You wanna leave that top alone, okay? You're just putting glue on this long rectangle here. So let me show you. I'm gonna grab my art glitter glue. I'm just putting it, you know, heavily down there and then I'm just going to stick my little white rabbit guy that I've cut out and backed on black cardstock just to give him a little bit more weight and I'm sticking him to that pop-up mechanism to the front of it to that long rectangle then I'm going to close my card and I'm going to give it a nice burnish and I'm just going to leave it closed and push on it for a minute to really let that glue absorb into the little rabbit all right so we're just going to let that stick for a sec and now when we open it you'll be able to see there's our little white rabbit guy and he's popped up. See, isn't that cute? So easy to do and just so fun. Now, if you wanna add the little photo mats like you see in the finished album, of course, we already show, showed you the front photo mat that goes right here behind our cards that we've left open on the right, which measures three by three. 
and then you can do the frame of three and a quarter by three and a quarter if you wish. I have a, pardon me, a little one that I uh, put uh, the top part of the card behind my little characters, and it's only two by two. Um, and then the little frame is two and a quarter by two and a quarter. I just thought this might be a really cute place to put a little bit of journaling. You know, um, you know, you could put the date or time of the event or whatever you wanted to do. So I just put some glitter glue, art glitter glue on the back of that and just stuck it behind my characters. And I did that in all of my pop-ups. But again, that's optional. You can leave it plain back there if you prefer. Or just stick your photo. You don't need to do the white paper and the frame. The white paper is just for demonstrative purposes for you guys who are watching this to kind of envision that there's a photo there. So if you're just making this for yourself, obviously you don't have to include that white mat if you don't wish. And then I also have a space down here where you could do some journaling with maybe a white gel pen or something, or you could place a photo. I did make little photo mats for mine. And this one measures, um, I don't remember off the top of my head, so let me check. This one is two and a half by two and a half, with the little frame being two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So if you would like to do them exactly how I did them, those are the correct measurements. But again, you can, this is your book and your pop-up mechanism, so you can, you know, put whatever you want inside here. I just wanted them to be fun, but also functional. So I wanted them to have a purpose beyond just being super adorable and fun to look at. <laughs> I wanted them to be, you know, useful as well. So hopefully you guys like this idea. Um, again, I just kind of, I used to do some pop-up cards in my card making days, so I thought, well, why not do that in a mini album? So here's what it looks like, again, just one last time. So here's the cover, and of course you can slide your 3 by 3 photo right underneath there, and then you open it up, and there's a room for photos, journaling, and there's our little white rabbit guy, popped up cute to that, um, pop-up mechanism that we made. Uh, I neglected to mention, uh, I think I did mention that I cut all of the little figures for my pop-ups out of the cut-aparts. So I used all six of these, all five of these rather, I'm sorry, this is the one I'm using for the demonstration now. So I had one left over. And then in one of the pop-ups, I also used the Red Queen from this cut-apart page here. Um, what I like to do is after I cut them out, I backed them on black cardstock just to give them some extra um, weight to them so they weren't quite so fragile. And then what I always do whenever I do any fussy cutting, because I am not a good fussy cutter at all, is I once I have it backed on the black cardstock, I set it down on some scratch paper and I trace around it with a black marker. I just use this Zig Memory System writer. It has two different sizes of tips and I just trace around my image on top of, you know, like I said, on top of scratch paper. And that way, that will hide any mistakes <laughs> that I made fussy cutting, and it'll just give a nice black outline to your image. You could also ink around the image as well with your powder puff, which you can get at Scrap and Create, or whatever you use for inking around your images. This works a little bit better for me because I'm so bad at fussy cutting. It really hides, I think, all my mistakes. So it's a good kind of little cheap way to make your fussy cutting look a little bit better. Okay, so that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and close up this so you can see what it looks like all finished. So I just tie a little bow here, like so. And then to adhere this to the flaps in the book, of course you can trim your, your tails of your bow if you made it too big. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And then to adhere this to the different flaps in the book, all you would do is turn it over and apply score tape all around. I did uh, around the perimeter and then I made an X um, with my score tape and then I just filled in the spaces with art glitter glue. So it had tons of, of extra stickiness. So it really sticks because it is a little bit bulky. So you wanna make sure that it sticks down nicely. That's why I use the score tape. And that's it guys. So like I said, there are only two in the book that are bigger than this but you make them the same exact way and that strip mechanism is the same size. So I will have all of the measurements down below in the description box of this video. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. 
and for stopping by the Scrap and Create YouTube channel. I hope that you love this album. I was really happy. I hate, you know, no one ever wants to sound like they're, you know, bragging, but I really was happy with how this one came out. So I hope you guys love it and maybe we'll make it along with me. Let me know what you think and if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for joining me on the Stamperia Alice adventure and have a wonderful day and I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.